Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition, and today I'm going to do an overview of Cable, the character of Cable in collected editions. Not just trade paperbacks or oversized hardcovers or premier hardcovers or omnibuses, but the whole thing. From his early appearances all the way up until Second Coming, right before the Marvel Now line. With this video, I hope to show you where everything fits in and how it reads in chronological order, if you can even do that with the character of Cable. And I also want to tell you where not to double dip. But if you want to own everything, I guess this is the video for you. And keep in mind, this is just a Cable collection. I'm throwing in some X-Force books in there because they're kind of needed for this. But as far as X-Man, Ask Any Son, or Baby Cable, all the way back in Uncanny X-Men 201, to the Endgame in X-Factor 68, uh, maybe another day. But right now, I'm just focusing on Cable. So, stay tuned! So what I'll do is I'll talk about the trade paperbacks and if it's collected in an omnibus or oversized hardcover, I'll mention that. I'll also like to mention what's been orphaned or what has not been collected yet and kind of where it all fits in and what has been covered and what might have been reprinted more than one time. So let's kick it off with this book called Cable and New Mutants. And what this collects is New Mutants 86 all the way to 94. Now these stories have never been reprinted in oversized format. They've just been reprinted in trade paperback, which is kind of weird because they really should have started the story of Cable with these books right here, because these reprint the early appearances when he first came from the future all the way to the past, and you don't know what his agenda was, but he joined the New Mutants, and he made him into a militant force. So it was really cool when I was a kid reading this stuff, written by Louis Simonson, and of course, Rob Liefeld, who ended up taking over the book and eventually making it X-Force. But we'll get to that in a second. So, like I said, this collects New Mutants 86 to 94 and Annual Number 5. I'm one of those guys that actually enjoys Liefeld's art, both the old stuff and the new stuff. I know it's weird, but he's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. Maybe because you're... God damn, Calvin doesn't even have a freaking mouth in that picture. I can see why people don't like his art. Um, maybe because he was a guilty pleasure because he was my childhood... Look how skinny he drew Sabretooth. That's kind of ridiculous. And then it continues on to Extinction Agenda. Since I've talked about this many times in the past, I'll just quickly tell you that this does collect New Mutants 95 to 97. And that is an oversized hardcover format. Okay, so after Extinction Agenda, we jump on to the X-Force Omnibus. And this has been collected in trade paperbacks and also in hardcover formats too, not just an Omni format. But this collects New Mutants 98, 99, and 100, and then X-Force 1 through 15. And the reason I bring this up is because this also collects the Cable Blood and Metal series 1 and 2, which I'll talk about here in a second. And this book mainly, primarily sets up who Rob Liefeld wanted Cable to become, this mil militant leader, and you find out why he came back from the past. There's this awesome pinup by Mike Mignola. I can tell why people did not like his artwork or do not like his artwork to this day because some of these pictures are just kind of ridiculous. So that's what this contains. But no worry, in case you can't get the omnibus, we'll talk about the Cable series because that is why you came to watch. I may do an X-Force video another time. So this is Cable Classics Volume 1 now out of print. But like I said, some of the collection is in here too. And this collects Cable's uh, early appearance in... New Mutants 87, reprinting that again, because you have to have his first appearance for this to make sense, I guess. Also, the Blood and Metal series, 1 and 2, which happens right before the Executioner song, that crossover. And then, right after he dies in the Executioner song, don't worry, it's Cable, he's a time traveler. He comes back, and he comes back with his own ongoing series. And the ongoing 1 through 4 is collected in here. That originally started with Art T-Bird on artwork, and he couldn't keep up a schedule, so they ended up passing that baton on to, I think Steven Scross took over it eventually. But for right now, it's Art T-Bird and Ron Lim, I believe. And I think Magnola, they, no, he did some of the pinups and covers. Next up, we have Cable Classics Volume 2, collecting issues 5 through 14. And this is, like I said, most of the stuff is written by Fabian Uciesa. And there's art by Derek Robertson and Ron Lim. Oh, I do love that guy's artwork. This is a pinup by Tony Daniel. Long before his days on Batman and Spawn. His mother, Ascany. And 
the fight with... Oh, Lee Weeks takes over the book. The fight with Omega Red. I always did like that character of Senyaka. And eventually, the artist that takes over is Steven Scrooge, who is one of my favorite artists. I think he comes on board with this issue. Yeah, 13. Now, Cable 6 and 8 was also featured in here, as well as The Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, which shows the Ask Any Sun saga. So here's the Omnibus Deadpool and X-Force Volume 1, which is actually X-Force Volume 2, but for some reason, they want Marvel wanted to cash in on the Deadpool name. Go figure. Now, this does collect the Cable ongoing series, issues 1 through 8. So those can be found in here, as well as in the classic Volume 2. And there is a solicitation for a cable in X-Force Omnibus. So that's really cool that they're doing that. And that's going to contain X-Force 32 to 43, Annual Number 3, Cable 9 through 20, and New Warriors 45 through 46, X-Factor 106, Excalibur 82, and Wolverine number 85. And of course, Cable, cable 16 is also found in Cable Classic Volume 3. This collects the cable ongoing series 15 through 20 and wolverine 85 so 20 is the phalanx or no 16 is the phalanx coming in crossover and then of course wolverine 85 is part one of that and it continues over to cable 16 which shows the conclusion with again art by steve scrose so by this point jeff loeb is now the ongoing writer so this takes us all the way to 20. And then Cable Classics Volume 4 was canceled. You can also find Cable 16 in the Phalanx Covenant, the big oversized hardcover event. While they canceled the main Cable Classics line, they decided two years later to just make it Cable and X4 Classics, because that makes more sense, I guess. They were trying to sell these titles, so. Okay, so whatever, here we go. Again, written by Jeff Loeb, a lot of this stuff. And then I th instead of Steve Scrooge, I believe this is Ian Churchill that took over the book. Oh, and there's a lot of stuff by the great and underrated Adam Polina, who does a lot of the x Force stuff. There's Ian Churchill, who never did acquire taste for his art. So this collects Cable issues 21 through 28 and X-Force 44 through 48. And I don't know, I guess at this time they were kind of feeding off of each other both of the titles because this kind of sets up the onslaught stuff or i'm sorry the early onslaught stuff and again cable and x-force volume classics volume 2 was solicited but got canceled by i remember i had my order on amazon and it got canceled so i guess there was no interest in it so marvel decided to bring it back four years later and instead of calling it cable and x-force classics volume 2 they decided to call it Cable and X-Force Onslaught Rising, which is fine. Just there's not a number anymore. and But the spines look identical. It's almost as if they had this planned. Okay, so let's dive in this book. A lot of this stuff, like I said, Jeff Loeb. And then you had John Ostrander that wrote some of this stuff. And then I believe Terry Cavana was writing the X-Men book. But anyway, this collects X-Force 49 through 56, Cable 29 through 31. So not a lot of Cable, but still needed. X-Man 14, the X-Force and Cable Annual 95, and then, by the way, Cable 29 is a crossover with X-Man, and that is also collected in The Man Who Fell to Earth, in case you have that trade paperback. So here's some more of that crossover here with that gorgeous Steve Scrooge artwork. Always liked him more than I did Ian Churchill. But well, from time to time, Ian Churchill was okay. He always seemed like a poor man's Jim Lee. There's more of that great Adam Polina artwork from X-Force. But this is a Cable video, so. And the next set of Cable comics are collected in this, the X-Men Avengers Onslaught Omnibus. And what's collected in this book are four Cable comics, and that is Cable 32 to 36. And then a lot of the X-Men and X-Force and stuff like that crossover event. But I won't talk about that. What I will talk about is that there is a new solicit for a Cable X-Force trade paperback coming out in March of 2019. Now that collects Cable 32 to 39 and X-Force 57 to 61 and also collects Incredible Hulk 444, X-Man 18 through 19 and X-Force Cable Annual 96. So a lot of the stuff that's been collected in here, actually all the stuff, all the X-Force and Cable stuff that was collected in here is going to be collected in that trade paperback. I guess it's kind of fitting that Cable is a character that jumps from time to time and all over the place because the next set of issues from Cable are found in this omnibus, or oversized hardcover rather. This is Operation Zero Tolerance, which was a crossover event with Generation X and X-Men 
and X-Force and Uncanny X-Men and Wolverine. But this contains cables issues 45 through 47. So that's the next step. And you're probably wondering where the rest of the stuff is. Well, 40 to 44 hasn't been collected yet. And I'll bring that back up a little bit later towards the end of the video as to what's not been collected. So if you're keeping tabs, 40 through 44 has not been announced or has been collected. After Operation Zero Tolerance, issue 47, we jump back into this. And this is the Hellfire Hunt. This is Cable and the Hellfire Hunt. So that's where this fits in. This is probably one of my favorite runs. This is the James Robinson and Joe Casey run. And of course, art by Ledron. This is not Ledron, this is Stephen Platt, who did this one shot of Wolverine and Cable, which kind of solves the mystery of how Cable knew Wolverine. Yeah, it's actually not a bad story, but yeah, this is the stuff that I really liked. Where the character of Cable is kind of not working with the X-Men anymore and isn't, seen, isn't being seen with X-Force, he's kind of doing his own thing. And he runs into a new set of characters, including one of my favorite side characters, and her name is Irene Merriweather, who's kind of a Lois Lane kind of reporter. This stuff is drawn by Ladron, and yes, they still try to sneak in a bunch of the Apocalypse stuff in here, because that all leads into the Age of Apocalypse. So let's get through here. And so this collects Cable minus one, which is how he meets Morty McTaggart in the Muir Island, and then issues 48 through 58, uh, Cable and Machine Man, Annual 98, and Machine Man and Bastion, Annual 98 as well. And then, of course, that Wolverine and Cable one-shot that I was talking about. Next up, we have the Nemesis contract. Um, this is a continuation of the Joe Casey run, and this also contains another crossover with X-Man. So this collects Cable 59 through 70, Annual 99, and the X-Man crossover 45 through 47 which I think it's the Return of Strife. He kind of, also a time traveler, just kind of shows up out of nowhere. But that's what can, is contained in here. And the next set of books are not named Cable. Yeah, but that's where you will find him. So, hold on. Okay, here we have these three set of books. And this is the Apocalypse the Twelve storyline, which was written by Alan Davis, art by Brett Booth, and it's a crossover again. Uh, now, there's no issues of Cable in here, but this does set up the storyline. This is the Shattering, which continues into Apocalypse the Twelve. This is Volume One, and this contains Uncanny X Men three seventy six to three seventy seven, Cable seventy three to through seventy six, which is the huge seventy five is the big issue, which is supposed to be the final fight with Apocalypse. But you know, is it ever a final fight with Apocalypse? In art by his co creator Rob Liefeld. And X-Men 96 through 97 and Wolverine 145 to 147. So since this collects Cable 73 through 76 and you're keeping tabs, that's right, there are some orphaned issues. And that is Annual 97, so the Cable X-Force Annual 97, and Cable 71 and 72. Those are the orphaned issues. And again, I'll bring it up towards the end of the video. And that continues into Volume 2, which is where the story kind of resolves. And this collects X-51, yeah, not, <laughs> it's Machine Man, uh, number 8, Uncanny X-Men 378 and Annual 99, Cable 77, which is the crossover Ages of Apocalypse, uh, Wolverine 148, X-Men Unlimited 26, X-Men 98, and X-Men The Search for Cyclops. And that is the miniseries 1 through 4. That's everything collected in there. And the aftermath of that story, and this also collects just one issue of Cable, is Powerless, where the mutants lose their powers. And this collects Uncanny X-Men 379 to 380, Cable 78, X-Force 101, Wolverine 149, and X-Men 99. Don't worry. It's not like the House of M aftermath, the decimation stuff. They do get their powers back within, like, two issues. But anyway, this is where Cable shows up next. Until this volume right here, Cable Revolution, which kind of takes place during the same time that X-Men Revolution took place, and also X-Force Revolution and X-Men Re Revolution, which were written by Warren Ellis. Now, I did an overview of this. This is the one that's written by the late Robert Weinberg, and this collects Cable 79 to 96, a huge chunk of Cable. Don't forget that Issue 87 is also collected in the Dreams End trade paperback and the upcoming Dreams End omnibus next year. But yeah, this is a huge chunk of Cable. Also, another one of my favorite runs. 
because you don't have to know a lot about the X-Men to enjoy this story. Um, even though it does include part of a crossover event, so I wouldn't recommend it as a jumping on point. I'll talk about my jumping on points here towards the end of the video. That leads us to Cable Soldier X, which is the remainder of the Cable series of volume, well, I guess volume two, right? Because there was a Blood and Metal miniseries. So this collects the Cable ongoing series, 97 to 107, and then they had to legally change the name to Soldier X, so it collects Soldier X 1 through 12. Why? Because for some reason Marvel didn't feel like paying Rob Liefeld any royalties for using the name Cable or Deadpool or X-Force for that matter. So Cable changed to Soldier X, Deadpool changed over to Agent X, and X-Force changed over to Ecstatics. Art by Igor Cordy and written by David Tishman and Darko Makan, Macon. I actually really enjoyed a lot of this stuff too. I wasn't the biggest fan of Igor Cordy when he was drawing Extreme X-Men, but his stuff on Cable is freaking awesome. I don't know why, uh, but he is a hell of an artist and really, really, really underused because I think at the time when he was doing Extreme X-Men, he was drawing like 15 different titles a month. I may be exaggerating. I think he was drawing four, but still, it's look, he took all his art skills and just sh really shined on Cable. And that wraps up Cable Volume 2, or first ongoing series. So before I talk about my favorite run of Cable, I have to talk about this little six-issue miniseries, X-Force and Cable, which is sort of the return of Rob Liefeld writing the character of Cable again with Fabian ECSA on script. And this was okay, at best. But they Marvel did notice that the character of Cable was selling again, so they decided to do this wonderful, amazing series, which is Deadpool and Cable. Now, this omnibus collects issues 1 through 50, and I'll briefly talk about it. I have talked and praised this series all the time on this channel and on Omnibros Live. This is my favorite run of Deadpool. This is my favorite run of Cable. And to have them together in one book is just amazing. So again, this collects issues 1 through 50. And it's like a Bosom Buddies kind of comedy where they are forced to be together at all times because of Cable's body slide. He gets stuck with Deadpool and they have to be together. Now, during this time, something happens to Cable. Now, during this run, the last 10 issues, Cable was, by editorial mandate, I'm sure, had to join the X-Men. So during Mike Carey's run, something happens to Cable. And Deadpool is kind of left to be with other characters from the Marvel Universe. So, like, the last ten issues, Cable doesn't really even show up. It's mainly, like, Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool and Doctor Strange. It's So, it's kind of funny that the title kept going without Cable. Now, where Cable does show up, though... So, we have Messiah Complex, which is this huge crossover where Cable kind of comes back. And all you really need to know is that he ends up taking Baby Hope, who is the new mutant after there were no more mutants supposed to be born and takes her into the future because he can't help it. That's the only place he can travel. He can just keep going further and further into the future, which kicks off this really cool series by Dwayne Swazinski, I think it's how you pronounce his name, and this wonderful artwork, uh, Olivetti, I believe. He was like a video game designer, if I'm not mistaken. Well, even if he wasn't, he should be. So this is volume one, which collects issues one through five. I'll show you some of this artwork here. There are two Ultimate Editions that have come out that have collected the entire run. And, yeah. So, post-apocalyptic future. The only thing I did not like about this series was... Oh, there's a picture by Rob Liefeld, David Finch. Was the fact that they made Bishop into a villain. So, Bishop is chasing Cable through time. Jumping from future to future, trying to kill Baby Hope. Because he believes that's what's going to destroy the mutant population eventually because he remember bishop is also from the future yeah i know it's kind of confusing but it's actually a decent storyline so this is volume two collecting issues six through ten and then we jump into the crossover with the new x-force volume two of x-force and that is the messiah war which is the second book in the messiah complex storyline and this collects issues 11 through 15 of cable as well as the Messiah War one-shot and X-Force 14 through 16 and the Life and Times of Lucas Bishop, which is a three-issue miniseries. 
and I believe there's also another one shot here, like Future's End or something like that. Yeah, it's something that kind of gives you a synopsis of what's going on in the future. So that's that crossover. And then there's a remainder of the run, which is Cable Volume 3 and Volume 4. Now, Volume 3 contains issues 16 through 21. This is after that crossover. And they go deeper into the future, and you can see Baby Hope is now growing. And Volume 4 is called homecoming so spoilers because you knew it was coming they make it back home eventually and this concludes the remaining of the cable volume three i guess and that is issues 21 to 24 and this ends on a cliffhanger which leads us to the final part of the messiah war or messiah complex trilogy and this is second coming and this doesn't collect any issues of Cable. This just kind of has a storyline with Cable. It's a huge crossover between X-Force, Uncanny X-Men, New Mutants, X-Men Legacy. And it kind of shows you what happens to Cable. Uh, and I'm not going to show you just in case you want to read it for yourself. Well, now comes the question of where should you start reading? Well, if you're a completist, you want to start from the beginning. And that would be this book right here, Cable and the New Mutants, with New Mutants 86 and 87 containing the first appearance of Cable, and all the way until he forms X-Force. And of course you want to stick with these books. Uh, but I don't really recommend it, honestly, because you're, you're already diving into crossovers and things like that. And as much as I love Fabian Nicieza, I think there are other better jumping on points. I hate to be the guy that tells you where to start reading something because I was also the guy that started reading X-Men with Uncanny X-Men 168 right in the middle of an ongoing, not a crossover event, but an ongoing storyline. So here's another book that I do recommend jumping on with is James Robinson and Joe Casey's Hellfire Hunt. Because this is where Cable just kind of decides to be his own man and doesn't really deal with the X-Men a lot. There's not a, any, hardly any crossover events and hardly any of his old characters from the past show up in this. So I think this is a really good one, I think with the exception, of course, of Domino. That's a really good jumping on point that I would suggest. Another one is the Cable Revolution, which I mentioned before, the exception of the Dream's End crossover. I think it's a really good book. While this one ties heavily into X-Men, I think Weinberg was able to do a really good job of kind of summarizing what was going on with all the other X titles. Like, for example, Cyclops being dead during this time. So let's see. And then there's Cable Soldier X. Highly recommend this one. I think this is a really good jumping on point because this is after he kills Apocalypse and what he's going to do with his life. And he becomes like some kind of mercenary. Then we've got Deadpool and Cable. I can't say enough about that. There's ultimate collections of that available, trade paperbacks. That's a wonderful jumping on point because I think Fabian Incesa does an amazing job of reintroducing Deadpool and Cable as standalone characters together in this amazing comedy slash great work of deep fiction. And the next jumping on point, I think a good reading place would be Cable after the Messiah Complex with these trades. Like I said, there's two trades available collecting these books. And then there's a trade available collecting this Messiah War crossover. Because all you really need to know is that Bishop is bad now and he's chasing Cable with this baby that's supposed to bring the hope to mutant kind. That's all you need to know. So just a quick recap. What is Orphaned is issues 40 through 44 and the Cable X-Force Annual 97 and issues 71 and 72. So hopefully Marvel will be able to fix all that soon. And that is everything in Collected Editions, from the moment that he appeared in New Mutants all the way up until Second Coming. Like I said, there is more stuff after this, but that stuff to me wasn't the greatest. So I hope I was at least able to kind of guide you where to start reading Cable and what I suggest a good jumping on point is. And let me know if you enjoy these types of videos and what other characters you would like to see in Collected Edition. I know people have suggested Batman, Captain America, and characters like that. So yeah, just keep those suggestions coming in the comments down below. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to tune into our weekly show that comes out every Thursday. And our live show that comes out every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, this was Omar. Have a wonderful day.